Well, John Sally is a regular on my show. And he said something that a lot of people, you know, threw their hands up. He said that Jordan is not the most skilled player that he's ever played with. It's actually Scottie Pippen, who is in your draft class. See, the, the funny thing is, I think Scottie is more skilled than all of them. Scottie Pippen is probably the most skilled player I've ever played with. Really? Yeah. And his hands come to his shit. <laughs> Would you agree or disagree? Disagree. I disagree. I love Scotty. Scotty is a heck of a player. And we talk about skill set, you know, and that's what I always talk about why I consider Michael as one of the best that ever played the game because each and every player, each and every player has some sort of deficiency in their game, you know, some sort of deficiency in their game. Uh, MJ was, was the only player I see that I witnessed that didn't have any type of deficiencies in his game. You know, the th even though the shooting was there, even in college, it, the range of shot, you know, the, the distance probably wasn't there, but the shooting ability was there, the athleticism, the creativity, the IQ level, the fundamentals to athleticism, I have never witnessed anybody better than, you know, someone who take the athletic ability and um, implement the fundamentals of the game and when you match that too, you know, that, that, that's, that's remarkable. And, you know, and like I say, from the defensive side of the ball to the offensive side of the ball, I didn't see any deficiency. Where, you know, I could point out a few things in Scotty's, but Scotty, I mean, again, so talented, so skilled. And, and man, Scotty, you know, was. Like you, know, you said, we was in the same class, coming through the Portsmouth. You know, what Scotty was able to do with his career was uncharted. I mean, at that size, you know, everybody had magic to be the only, that big 6'9 point guard. But Scotty had a different way of playing that position, you know, and the, the way he was able to affect it. And, and affect it in, in the right way to where he was not on the point guard on that team, but as well as the you know, one of the top defenders. And I always say MJ still was one of the, was the nine time defensive champion you know, made the nine nine years defensive player of the year. Um, so that's 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 a remarkable, you know, within itself. But again, I so I just to get back to that, I just disagree with Jay Sally's uh assessment of that. You know, when you look at the greats, you look at Jordan, you also have to look at Kobe, and you have to look at LeBron. You know, as, as a former professional uh, basketball player, where would you rank those three? Well, you know, they all sitting at the same, you know, same table, I should say. But MJ is above them all for me, then, you know, I'll get, I will get MJ, LeBron, Kobe. Because of what LeBron is still able to do, you know, at this stage in his career, and, and, and Kobe, you know, we've seen a Kobe before, MJ, a better version of it. But Kobe was able to imitate what MJ was able to do as well and take it to that level. And, and, but LeBron did it in a way at a 6'9 body frame, you know, um, the longevity that he's displayed, um, where he's gone each and every year, he's able to elevate his team and his teammates. And, you know, last but not least, you know, he was able to win a championship at each spot. So that's a, a, a treat within itself. So, uh, and getting to the finals nine times out of 10, that, that's, that's pretty strong. So, I mean, that's how I look at those guys, you know, and, and it's hard because they all great. <laughs> that's the thing about it, they all great. But for me, I always I just got MJ and I got LeBron and then Cole. How did it feel when, you know, years after you, you left the team, Jordan actually bought the Hornets uh, for $180 million, from what I understand? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and uh, you know, things come in full circle. And, you know, he's, a, he's from Carolina. Uh, he, you know, he found the opportunity when, you know, Bob Johnson wanted to get out. And, and it was the best decision I think him and his family ever, you know, probably could have made because in his position, 
uh, what this organization mean to this community in this state and for him to be you know the owner of that I mean it just put a great you know spot on his legacy uh, because the things that he's able to do um, with the team hopefully continue to maybe bring a championship here um, that's the goal that's the ultimate goal but at the same time would he the way he served the community you know continue to serve the community you know giving uh, resources to people who didn't have access uh, open up the Jordan family um, uh, clinic center um, giving a hundred million dollars to Black Lives Matter movement um, just done so much you know for not only for the city of Charlotte, but for the NBA as a whole. And um, so he's in a good position, and for him to be able to own the Hornets is rightfully, is well-deserving. I mean, as someone that's so connected to the Hornets, are you a little disappointed that they've never made it to the to the finals at all? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and that's all part of the decision-making and, and, and bringing in the, the type of players. And, and I'm quite sure MJ now... Not even now, but he's aware of that as well. And uh, hopefully we get there. You know, um, you know, I'm, I'm never going to turn my backs on the Hornets. Uh, I believe that, you know, it's a process. And I believe that, you know, it's been a long process. But, uh, you know, we, 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 we will get there. We will get there. And I like the direction. I like what Mitch Kupchak is doing, um, what he's done thus far. And the excitement that we have around the team now with the young fella, LaMelo Ball, uh, really brings some excitement in addition with Haywood, uh, uh, Gordon Haywood. So a lot of things they feel good about. And, um, you know, coming off a big win the other night. So they're feeling really good. And hopefully that, you know, going forward, they can continue the success. Well, uh, six games into the, the 97 season, you got traded to the Golden State Warriors. Uh, was that heartbreaking to you? Or is it like just part of the business and you, you saw it coming. Well, yeah, yeah, I saw it coming at the time because it was a lot of things going behind the scene uh, leading up to that. Man, it was, that was just the final straw. That was the final straw of it. You know, I've been there nine years. They brought in David Wesley and uh, instead of uh, having it uh, be a competition thing, they just wanted to kind of, you know, do away with me, you know, without me, you know, having anything to say about it. But uh, it, was, it, it was a mutual decision. And, uh, you know, I was grateful that I was able to move on and go to Golden State, even though, you know, some things wasn't great during that time while we was there. But, I mean, I met some great people in the organization, a lot of people in the community, and uh, we had a great time. You know, unfortunately, you know, some incidents took place with PJ and Spreewell. But, um, but unfortunately, I mean, but fortunate enough, we got through that. And uh, then I went on and went to Toronto. So uh, it was... But I enjoyed the Bay Area. I mean, still got some good people, good friends that's living out there. Okay, so you're actually at Golden State when the whole choking thing happened with Sprewell? Yeah, yeah, I was there. Just got there a week. I was only there a week. And, and all this thing transpired. And we kind of, you know. Were, were you in the gym when that happened? Uh, well, me and Spree was shooting. Me and Spree <laughs> was on the other end shooting, doing that rap and fire drill. And, uh... And where PJ came down and and told Priest to put something on the effing pass on Muggsy. And Man Spree just looked like, what was he, what is he talking about? <laughs> and then he come back and then he's put a little explicit behind it, put something on the fucking pass to Muggsy. And I guess Spree just had enough of it. And, you know, then all of a sudden he just slammed the ball. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm tired of you fucking with me or uh, effing with me. And, and it escalated from there, and then, uh, but yeah, so yeah, I, I was there. I was there. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that that's still talked about to this day. I, I, unfortunately, I know, and yeah, you know, it, we, you know, it was a trial and everything behind all of that, and um, so uh, that was just sad. And you know, and I like, and I like PJ, and of course, Spree is my guy. You know, so. Yeah, I mean, does Prewell have the the spinning rims during that time? Yeah, well, cause I got the New York the the two years afterwards. That's when the spin. Well, he had the uh, company. They they were yeah. you know the the Spreewell's, you know wheels was out there, cause I had got a set of those spinning rims. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, I mean, they were called literally spree wells during that time. Like the spinning rims came later, but at the time, everyone was calling them spree wells. Uh, I was one of the first to have it because I was with the Knicks at the time. <laughs>